We've got a Melic Adventure collaboration celebrating Atlantis, the Lost Empire. So let's get cracking! Hello all my explorers and welcome back to Lauren's Adventures out there. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren and I'm with Castle Escape to Clothes, where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, ABC, Hulu, Disney Plus. If it's about Disney, we will be talking about it. So if you like that kind of content, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. So, Danielle and Ben over at Melic Adventures uh, are hosting two monthly collaborations uh, every month, and each one is celebrating a different Disney or Pixar, or I don't even know if there's Marvel or Star Wars, maybe? I don't know. I might be wrong. But I know definitely Disney and Pixar. Um, and so, uh, you can we can do whatever we want. The sky's the limit on uh, what we want to do. Uh, I know that I've done a couple of them where I have shown different things in the park going on. Um, but today, we are celebrating... Atlantis the Lost Empire and I was really trying to put my head uh, together trying to figure out like what should I do that other people might not be doing and one of the things that I feel like I do well in is researching different things and talking about them on this channel and so today we are going to be talking about one of the most influential, if not the most influential, artist on Atlantis, the Lost Empire. And that would be prolific comic book artist and writer Mike Mignola. Mignola is most well known for the popular Hellboy comics and all of its spin-offs. Hellboy was adapted for the silver screen several times. He worked for both Marvel and DC Comics. At Marvel, he worked on Daredevil, Power Man and Iron Fist, The Incredible Hulk, and Alpha Flight. One of his co-creations was Rocket Raccoon. At DC Comics, uh, one of the biggest projects he did was working on cover art for the iconic Batman A Death in the Family story arc. He also had an opportunity to work with one of his biggest influences, the legendary Jack Kirby, who defined the Marvel style for decades. Disney was pleased with a different stylistic approach for Hercules, which took its inspiration from Gerald Scarf. So they invited Mignola to join the crew. He was surprised when he was contacted by Disney to work on Atlantis The Lost Empire. He was one of four production designers working on the film. He worked with Matt Codd, Jim Martin, and Ricardo Delgado. But his style definitely had the strongest influence on the film. His squared and angular style prevalent in all of his works defined the visual style of Atlantis. In a 2011 New York Daily News interview, Mignola said, I remember watching a rough cut of the film, and these characters have these big, square, weird hands. I said to the guy next to me, those are cool hands. And he said to me, yeah, they're your hands. We had a whole meeting about how to do your hands. It was so weird, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. He would regard working on Atlantis as one of the, quote, 
top three or four most surreal experiences I've had in my career. Co-director Kirk Wise said, when Mike was brought into the process, we all had already started breaking down and analyzing his style and incorporating motifs and elements of it into the background of the characters. And it was really gratifying that he jumped on with such enthusiasm. He got along great with us and our whole team. He contributed tons of sketches and ideas. One day, Mignola left a drawing on Wise's desk. It was a, quote, blind stone flying fish with lightning shooting out of its mouth. Under the sketch, Mignola left a note, I have a really cool idea, call me. That's pretty much how the climax of the movie evolved. Telling Inverse, Mignola said, Atlantis was a great experience. Once I settled into it, I had a good time. I had never really thought about, quote, world building at the time. I was a bit thrown off by it all because being a comic book artist, I was used to working relatively fast. You settle on your story and then design what you need. But even the story was so fluid for so long. I remember one of the offhand comments I made radically changed the last third of the film. It was all just new and interesting. I probably could have worked on the film a lot longer, but I was well into the Hellboy stuff by then, so I only worked on it a few days at a time. I remember doing a pile of drawings that really did a lot to establish the look of the city. I drew probably all those in just a couple days. While Mignola remains humble about his days working at Atlantis, his style has made it a cult classic that it is today. There you have it. I hope you, that you enjoyed learning about Mike Mignola and his work on Atlantis and the Lost Empire. Uh, thank you again to Ben and Danielle for inviting me to be part of this collaboration. There are many channels that are involved, so please do check them out. I'll, I have them listed down below. And if you had a good time today, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications and do like this post as it really does help us out. Visit us on all of our socials down below and visit our website at www.castlescapesandclones.com. Thank you so much and we will see you later. Bye!